What's up, everybody? Khaled Iwamura from Insaga.com. I'm here with the man himself, the guru, the the man, the myth, the legend of Mississauga real estate. Is that okay, Sam? Sam it's very flattering. I appreciate the kind words. <laughs> so let, let's get right to it. We've got so many real estate questions. Uh, they come from our journalists and they come from uh, the viewers at home on Instagram. So the question, I, I hate to sound like a broken record, Sam. Do you see interest rates dropping anytime soon? Yeah, it's a question we get oft, asked often. And I believe that rates are probably here to stay where they are for the long run. You might see a modest drop of a quarter or half percent, but the notion of rates going back to sub 2% five-year fixed, I think is a thing of the past. So we got to eliminate that. And even if you look at a 40-year window, where we are today, still historically pretty good, albeit, you know, the the dollar amounts of mortgages are much higher, so every 1% makes a material difference. But I think don't hold off because you think rates are going to drop materially. If there's a quarter, half percent drop, that's possible. But I don't think that's going to impact the market one way or another. So you're saying it, it's not, you don't think that the uh, interest rates have impacted the market over the last uh, year? Well, they've impacted them a lot, a lot, because okay. they went up almost the better part of 5%. But I think we've recalibrated and adjusted. Um, they actually went up 4.75% in less than one year, which is probably the biggest rate increases we've seen since I've been in the game, and that's 35 years. So that's really material, and it did have a lot of impact, and it's still infecting people today. But I think rates as we see them today is probably where they're going to be for the foreseeable future, say for a quarter percent, half percent, up or down. But I think the heavy rate increases have been accounted for. I don't think we'll see more of that in the foreseeable future. Awesome. Uh, prices of uh, houses seem to be going up in Mississauga. Do you see that being a trend uh, during spring and summer? I didn't expect it this spring. I thought we were going to have a flat line spring, and I told most of my teammates expect for expect a tougher year. I mean, rates have gone up a lot. Affordability might come into play. Much to my surprise, the last 30, 45 days, the market's picked up dramatically, and we're seeing multiple offers again. I wouldn't call it the same as Q1 last year. That was probably the height of the market. I mean, it was real sheer madness, but we're seeing the market heat up, which is surprising to me. But I think it's also predicated on the fact we have limited inventory and the buyers had finally decided to enter the market again. They realized state rates have stabilized. They're probably not going to go up anymore. They're probably not going to go down too much. Either way, it's going to be a modest change. And I think they feel it's the time to get back in. So all those buyers who were in the sidelines last year after they maybe lost out with all those crazy offers or watching the market go down, I think they're back in the game today. Okay, cool. I guess, uh, how are home sales now? December, January, we're not very good. Uh, April has been, it was a really good month for us again, and May looks like it's a solid month. So I think we're starting to see what we call our classic spring market where activity is taking place now and people will buy now and close late spring, early summer, get ready for school season. So we're, we're seeing a really good market. And like I said, I probably would have foreshadowed that, but we're in a good place today. Awesome. Uh, what home types are being sold right now? Condos? Is that a dog behind you there, Sam? <laughs> yeah, I hope there's not a dog. <laughs> They might be a dog. It's not my dog, anyway. Okay. Um, so, so, sir, what home sales, uh, home types are being sold right now? Well, the the under million has gotten really strong again. And keep in mind the down payment requirements. So, if you're buying a place under a million dollar, the down payment requirements significantly less. So, just as a refresher, the first five hundred thousand, you're paying five percent as a minimum, and the balance up to a million, you're paying ten percent. So if you bought a place for seven hundred thousand, the first five hundred thousand is twenty five thousand. The two hundred thousand is twenty thousand, so it's forty five thousand. So if you get to a million, it's twenty percent across the board. So under a million, the down payment's almost half, or even in some cases, 30, 40 percent of what it would be otherwise. So under a million's been really strong, and people are mindful that if they go over a million, then they need a much bigger down payment. Mind you, the ones over a million, if they're second time buyers, they've got equity and they can parlay that into the next opportunity as well. So we're seeing the first time buyers come in under a million strong, one to two million still very strong. When you start getting to luxury four or five million, I mean, ironically, there's still activity, but you're not gonna get multiple offers. I mean, you're looking for one good buyer who appreciates the property and what it has to offer and the right to roll up their sleeves and hopefully negotiate a good deal on both sides. Awesome. Cool. Uh, what is the most, I, I, I laugh when I say, when I 
I'm going to read those questions. What are the most economical places to buy a home in Mississauga? <laughs> Is there economical places? Yeah, I think economical may not be the right word today, but I mean, I think there's probably places that are less expensive. Clearly, South Mississauga, close to the lake, be it Port Credit, Lower Park, Lakeview, Rattery Marsh, so they've got they've pretty pricey. So I think North Mississauga has some better opportunities. Obviously, condo living still is, you know, relatively, if you want to use the word relatively affordable. So, um, so there's pockets, but I don't think there's anything that's really inexpensive today. Awesome. And uh, so some, some kid walks in and uh, he's early 20s and he wants advice to buy a place right now. What advice do you give him? Listen, that's a great question. And I believe get in the game. If you can get into real estate in any shape or form, even if you have to buy slightly outside or buy a little bit higher up, buy a condo, you're going to do well because the earlier you can get in the game, the more you see equity appreciation and on a whole prices double every 10 years. So if you buy a place, say, for 500000 and you're able to try and pay down the mortgage quickly, in 10 years, it's going to be worth a million. And if you take the right strategies or steps to pay off the mortgage, you can actually actually pay it off in 8 to 12 years. So let's just take the midpoint 10 years. That million-dollar asset is now free and clear. And otherwise, you're renting, and most people find a way not to save. They're not fiscally responsible. So try and get in the game. And don't try and time the market, because sometimes people try and time it. And that's still advice because no, every 10 years prices double. Of course, you don't want to get into a bidding war frenzy where there's 30 offers and you're paying stupid dollars. That doesn't make sense. But last year, for example, Q4 of last year, in the first month of this year, if people had the courage to buy, they'd be up 10% today because they, you're trying to time it. And already prices were much lower than they were in the early part of the year. Why not get in? You're trying to time time when you actually time it or so you think you timed it right price start doing this and you're back trying to catch. So I think get in the game, make a good sound decision. Don't try and time the market too much because otherwise it could cost you. What's the saying, Sam? Uh, it's it's uh, time in the market is better than timing the market. Yeah, right? it's, that's exactly right. Because I yeah. listen, at the end of the day, most people's wealth is created through real estate, right? I mean, you're unfortunately, you're forcing, you just, depending on how you want to look at it, Taxes are really high here. You're 30 to 50 percent, depending on your tax bracket. There's HST, there's this, there's that, there's luxury taxes. So at the end, real estate is a safe haven that's protected. So you're not any gains you make on your principal investment or property is capital gains exempt, which is huge, right? So if you buy, listen, Cal, I did. I was doing a transaction last weekend, and it was multiple offers, and it was a really nice elderly lady in our office, and her kids were here, and we had listed this semi in East Mississauga for 888. And she was already in her mind baffled at these numbers. So we had seven, eight offers. We we're able to get her 980,000. She right. was like, honestly, beside herself. And she looked at me and she goes, Sammy, I would never pay 980 for my house today. Like, that's crazy. <laughs> but here's the thing she bought it five decades ago for $25,000. So is that a good investment? 25,000 became a million dollars, right? Real estate, right? And, and the market last year might have been slightly more than a million, but it just tells you how resilient our real estate market is and why people should get in the game. And that's, that's the retirement. Um, same, uh, same question. What advice would you give somebody looking to sell a house right now? This is back to being a strong spring market and we're counseling our sellers to try and get in the market ASAP if they have intentions of selling today. If they're kind of just testing the waters, trying to get counsel, that's different. But I think the next 30, 60 days will be a telling period. I think the market is performing really well. And I think once you get to the summer months, it'll still be a good market, but it probably won't be as robust. So if you're thinking of selling, given the conditions we're seeing today and the lack of inventory, I think you should put the pedal to the metal. Awesome. Sam, and uh, one last question from Instagram we have here is um, you've been interviewing a lot of uh, sports celebs uh, for your um, advertising campaign. Uh, who's your next sports celeb you're going to get? Uh, we've got a couple in the works, uh, and I won't mention names yet, but there's two or three, but one, uh, is also a Toronto Blue Jay because we want to kind of spice it up and have different athletes within our city. So a pretty good picture that, uh, is with our organization. So we're excited about that as well too. So, um, it's been really fun. It was our marketing team that came up with the concept and, uh, it's been really fun having our friends like Doug Gilmore and of course, Precious, a great guy and, you know, Enoch, who you introduced me to, is a great yeah. guy as well, too. And Wancho, who, Bo Cruz, who left to go back to Spain. But, uh, yeah, we were having a lot of fun with it. And it's good to get to know these guys. And hopefully the viewership is enjoying get to know them a little better as well, too. That's awesome, man. All right, Sam, thanks. Uh, those are all the questions I have today. Is there anything you want to say? 
keep up the great work. I like your wall of fame there. A lot of nice people there. So <laughs> keep it up, Cal. We'll break for it soon as well. Awesome. Cool. All right. Take care, Sam.